I'm Andrelisium, and welcome to Crusader Kings 3. Today, we're going to be having a look at the Princess of Darkness mod, which overhauls Crusader Kings 3 and sets it in the World of Darkness franchise, specifically Vampire the Masquerade. Which, those of you who don't know, Vampire the Masquerade and World of Darkness is a, a tabletop LARP setting, which is now owned by Paradox through White Wolf and is basically about as gritty a pseudo fantasy modern world as you can get but there does exist versions of it set in the dark ages and this basically sets it at a particular juncture in the world and its lore it's a fantastic world it's got amazing lore it's got the grittiness that like warhammer 40k pretends it has i absolutely adore it i'm actually in a tabletop show on saturdays on roll for it uh that's absolutely fantastic that i really love which is vampire the masquerade so this mod is everything i've been looking forward to and yes it's still in development but there are a whole load of cool things so that over and done with let's just load up a game those of you who don't know what vampire the masquerade is or the world of darkness in particular um a there is an amazing wiki for it the world of darkness wiki is fantastic but also, it's a 30-year-old franchise that has so much lore, I probably won't be able to explain everything in this video because it's talking about this mod as opposed to the lore of World of Darkness in general. But there's a whole load of stuff. So if you don't understand some of the terms, that's fine. It's still a fantastic game, and it does actually try and introduce things. For instance, we start at 12.30 with this mod. Completely new start date. New map. And you'll also notice that a whole load of new characters. So the idea behind the lore is that this time and date... Vampires kind of were all the powerful people and they controlled the world from not necessarily behind the scenes, but not out in the open. They were powerful people, but people didn't know they were vampires, generally. This is set just after the fall of Constantinople, which was the big vampire empire of the time. And after the fall of Constantinople, things kind of changed. And so you've got all these famous characters from the lore, such as Mithras up here. Ruling Britain. I'm turn the volume down a little bit on the audio. Crusader Kings. I really wish they'd normalize the audio a bit more. Uh, you've got uh, House Tremere. Um, you've got Famous Tamishi over here. Like, all these characters are amazing from lore. But also, you can play as any ruler and we can dive in and then pick someone else. Which, you know, you can do in normal Crusader Kings. But also... That one thing I don't like is the fact that if you zoom out far enough when you get to the map layer, it does this kind of dark overlay thing which i'm not a massive fan of it's like i know it's world of darkness but like can the darkness be metaphorical rather than just turning down the brightness on my monitor so zooming in we can go down to like cornwall oh look duke hugh the patient rebel of cornwall uh but we can also zoom further in to marsh and the illegitimate and then we can load up some of these vampires like if we go over to latinum kaboda all of these people, you'll notice... Oh, this is kind of different from Crusade Kings. What's this? This is one of the bigger changes. So, the game has used a whole load of new mechanics, which is crazy for a game mod that's only been out, like, a short time. But these new mechanics tend to use the religion system. And in this game, it's not necessarily just religion with the mod. It's more like your society, cultural outlook in addition to religion in some cases. So you might have an outlook that emphasizes humanity and what it means to be human, despite the fact you're a vampire. Um, I don't believe I know anyone who has that right now. But also, if you were like to play as a famous Ventru, like Mithras, you will have Mithrasism, which is all focused around him, which I believe is an offshoot of Regalis, which is the whole, um, you should control others to be able to control your own inner beast that vampires have, which they try and deal with. Otherwise, they go on a killing spree. So, religion plays a massive part. Now, if we just load up... Um, let's load up someone really tiny over here. Countess Eloise Marchand. Only 48. You'll notice if we actually go over to, like, Mithras... Yeah, the ages get kind of insane. Actually, you're not that old. Where's the oldest person we can find? Oh, Tremere's not going to be old at all. Yeah. Probably the Red Empress or the Lord of Light. So, yeah. We just zoom in here and we pick Eloise Marchand. Obviously, vampires. Old age. Uh, we're going to play as her. And then you'll notice that we get this pop-up immediately, which is Welcome to Princes of Darkness. So, we can talk about, like, the main vampire mechanics, altered concepts, the world and its lore, which I think is fantastic. Like, they've added all this stuff to make it as accessible as they possibly could. But also, 
there is a character generator. Now, it's not like a, hey, design your character completely, but it's more about designing your own vampiric origins. Like, currently, we are the Clan Ventru, which is one of the types of vampire clan there is. Um, and we have access to the disciplines of Dominate, Fortitude, and Presence. In fact, we've got Presence Advanced. Ooh. Um, those are pretty cool. You'll note that we have some crazy prowess going on. Like, 21. That's actually not that high. In this game, vampires are completely and utterly badass. And to be fair, in World of Darkness in general, they can be pretty badass. Um, especially in this day and age when they're like a much older generation. For instance, those of you who've seen the Underworld films, Underworld is a ripoff of World of Darkness. Maybe just not as gritty and kind of emphasizing the action a bit more. And some of you might be like, whoa, 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 of course it's not. I like that franchise. It can't be a ripoff. There was a lawsuit. They lost. The whole, like, vampires versus werewolves thing it also kind of goes back to the World of Darkness franchise. Like, all modern vampire lore tends to be really focused around things that Vampire the Masquerade and World of Darkness in general has popularized. And so, back in the Dark Ages around now, vampires much more powerful. In the modern day and age, less powerful because they tend to peter down uh, the generation. Look, complicated vampire lore. There's so much vampire lore. I love it. But anyway... Uh, we can go through the character generator. So we'll actually do that. And it'll wipe our traits. Welcome to the character generator. Yes, I do want to use it. It'll wipe all our stuff. So then it wipes us and puts us back to default. You'll notice that it's still got the traits here. But if I actually reopen them, they're gone. Uh, we also are now Via Humanitis. Which is basically our outlook, our religion. Uh, is all about what it means to be human. And trying to use that to hold on to our humanity rather than succumbing to our inner vampiric beast so what kind of supernatural are you uh we're a vampire there in theory will be other choices there's a few things in the game mentions of mages and werewolves that suggest that in future you might be able to play as a different type of supernatural creature super for short i know it can evoke superhero like images but definitely not the right world for that we're gonna play as a vampire uh who is the progenitor of vampires now this is a big question um, most people accept Cain, but there are different ways of looking at it. Like, people say, oh, well, Lilith was the one who sired, in inverted commas, Cain. And so, Lilith is actually the first one. She's number zero. Uh, Cain is just number one, but, like, whatever. Anyway, complicated vampire lore. Again, look at the wiki. Uh, or if you don't need to look at the wiki because you know it already, then I don't need to tell you. But you can choose, like, how you look at things. And, hey, um, Odin... Odin was the progenitor of vampires, and you gain the trait Gangrel. Um, Odin, the Norse god Odin, in the World of Darkness, actually happened to be a Gangrel, a clan Gangrel. Actually was a thing. Um, and then we can convert to, and then we get a new faith, focused around uh, an organized feral religion, etc. We can say, I don't know where vampires come from. We get the trait Caitith, which is a kind of like a non-clan clan. You're clanless. Uh, we get Humanitas. We also get 12th generation as our secret. Which means that we are very weak compared to everyone around us. For instance, uh, Mithras, I believe, is 4th gen off the top of my head. Um, vampires, as they sire people, each siring takes the generation further away from the progenitor, Cain. Um, and you get weaker. Like, it's a dilution of the bloodlines. So, we could go with that and be super not that powerful. Or we could be like, hey, maybe we're not a vampire. We could actually be a human ruler in the world of darkness, which actually would be potentially quite interesting. Uh, the Dark Mother sees vampires of many origins, you know. This is effectively, say, worship Lilith, etc. We convert to direct Lilith, which is worshipping Lilith. Anyway, so many cool things you can do here. Um, I'm just going to flick through a few of them, which say normal Cain. Which child of Cain does your clan descend? So it's very in deep in the lore. Like, which child of Cain... So, Cain's original second generation. We can say, uh, I read the Strong. And then, which third generation, Antediluvian, founded your clan? Ventru. We get the trait Ventru. And then we can say, oh, well, which house do you claim lineage? This is, again, we're going really deep into VTM law here. You don't need to do your character creator. And even then, it doesn't really matter too much what you pick. But if you really like your lore about either VTM or World of Darkness... Um, you can go in really, really deep here. Like, say, which house do you claim lineage? Mithras. Because he is, you know, in control of England. Why not? 
What's your relation to House Mithras? I am the child of Lord Mithras. So, uh, yeah, obviously, uh, Mithras is the fourth gen, so we're fifth gen. I have my own cadet house. Well, you're probably down the line somewhere, seventh gen. Uh, my line of descent is unclear. If your line of descent is unclear, you're probably further away. You become tenth gen. So we'll say we're the childer. And then we can say, oh, well, what disciplines do we have? Normally, Venture have Dominate Fortitude Presence. We could say, oh, well, we're, uh, we're Danava, which have Blood Sorcery, Fortitude, and Dominate. So we lose Presence, but we gain Blood Sorcery. That's pretty cool. Um, we'll go with that. Why not? And then we get Blood Potency 4. Um, blood potency is kind of like a measure of how strong your blood is, generally tied to generation. And so we get plus two to all our stats, and we get a godlike health boost. It's pretty hard to kill vampires, so go with that. And then the masquerade. So the masquerade is overall how well known it is that you are a vampire. With our exposure zero, we're hidden. As you do things in the game your masquerade exposure will go up and things will start happening. There might be events or the Inquisition might happen and they will try and murder you. And so we try and keep our nature a secret. You gain blood hunger one, we're hungry. And then, oh, well, we can pick our road, which is kind of like our path. We'll say we'll go the road of kings. Which path do you follow? And then this is basically going to be picking our faith. So we'll say Mithratic Mysteries. We convert to the Mythos. What is your prey? Humans or vampires? Uh, if we go vampires, we do increase our blood potency. We get celerity as a trait, which is another discipline. Our prowess goes up by one. But we do get a secret that, hey, you you, you can't you hunt vampires. It's, it's kind of not allowed. We're going to go with that. Cool. Uh, due to their inherent weakness, Ventru have exacting and rarefied tastes. So, again, all clans in... Vampire the Masquerade have these drawbacks, these uh, banes. And Ventru's bane is that they can only feed on certain people. And so we can actually model that kind of with the game in terms of, oh, well, maybe age, sex, location, or what do you do for a living, or what are you into? Are you a good person? Let's let's say we only feed on age, sex, location, um, old men. Sure, we only prey on old men. And now that's our character. If we close and reopen, you'll note that we are now 31 prowess, Ventru, Dominate, Fortitude, Blood, Sorcery, and Celerity. And we are Mithracism. Uh, let's have a look. So, you'll notice that there's a whole load of stuff added to the faith. For instance, Oathworn. Um, a whole load of stuff about, like, how you relate to your ruler. Uh, we focus on self-control, conviction... Um, you've got Masquerade, Blood Cult. Characters with Consensualist or Familius are shunned. Characters with Cult Trait are accepted. So, like, we are allowed to make Blood Cults, people who willingly give the blood to us. Um, Diablery, which is the act of, uh, like, destroying and subsuming another vampire to eat their spirit and become more powerful, is not allowed. It's criminal. But we could make that legal. Um, being a thin blood is criminal. That's someone who has had their blood so diluted that they're only, like, part vampire. You can ghoul people. You can have infernalism. There's magic. Uh, lycanthropy, being a werewolf. Blood sorcery. Fey stuff, even with glamour. All this stuff. Not necessarily in the game. As far as I'm aware, there's no mages. There's no werewolves. There's no fey. But again, suggested that there might be in future. And again, you can you can make your own religion. You can create a new scion faith and start riffing on this. There's so much you can do with the stuff that's now modeled in the game. Which is fantastic. Sorry, I'm just going to... I'm going to be very enthusiastic throughout this. But one of the biggest changes is how lifestyles work. Now, obviously, because you're a vampire, you're kind of going to live forever unless someone kills you, which is pretty hard to do. Uh, you can't have children, but you can sire people. I turn them into vampires. Uh, but that does mean you're going to start picking up lifestyles very quickly. The way they've changed this is that they've massively slowed down how you gain lifestyle so if we actually pick a lifestyle it will take us a lot longer to get anything but you'll also notice there's now cleric melancholy phlegmatic sanguine and animal which are the five types of blood that you can get I modeled on the four humors from like medieval medicine and each of these is tied to different disciplines so for instance 
because of my cleric focus, I will gain more XP in cleric. So in cleric, you'll see we have celerity, potence, and vicissitude. Uh, we're actually going to go out and we're going to pick um, sanguine. We can get blood sorcerer. Here we go. Do we have training in sanguine? Yes, we do. Oh, we've got training all four. Oh, great. Uh, so we're actually going to start learning about blood sorcery or we could learn about presence which is all about like social manipulation let's do blood sorcery and then you know we'll gain experience we'll unlock perks but their system is a little bit more complicated you need to be able to unlock a perk and then you need the experience to be able to invest in a perk it's not particularly an intuitive system and it's a little bit more complicated so there are a few more steps in addition to it being massively slowed down but there's a whole load of new stuff here. Like you've got these new trees and each new tree has so much stuff in it to represent each of the clan disciplines. You'll notice that actually sometimes some of these buttons can be quite annoying. Like animal, if I actually click on the middle, does nothing. The actual like hitbox is down here. The mod is still in development. Uh, like again, massive amount of stuff that's actually in this mod, including like tooltips and stuff that tell you about things in the lore, despite the fact the game's only been out a short while. Um... But looking at some of these, you'll see that we've got stuff like Corrode Vitae. Uh, it allows us to have Siege Phase Time decrease. But if we go across to something like uh, Obfuscate, it makes schemes easier because you, Obfuscate's all about being hidden. Uh, if we go across, however, to... Where is it? Um, Phlegmatic. Cloud Memory. It doesn't say what it does. And that's because... A lot of these abilities, not only do they give you buffs, but some of them give you situational options. Like when you get the pop-up text, it says, oh, do you want to do this or do you want to do this? There are so many events where you can use these abilities. For instance, if someone sees you do a vampire thing and they're like, oh, you did a vampire thing. What is going on? And it's going to raise your masquerade exposure because someone's going to tell someone, oh, they saw you drinking the blood or whatever. If we had cloud memory, we'd have an alternate option, which is make them forget. And it would be much higher chance of success. So these are all tied into a lot of the actual like in-game options and pop-ups and decisions that you will be making. In addition, there are some that just straight up give you new abilities in how to interact with characters. For instance, advanced dominate allows you to do some crazy stuff in addition to stuff like uh, advanced presence. So I'm actually going to load up a game I did earlier and demonstrate this so here we go playing the same character although i did actually start this character as a 12th gen caitiff i made it as hard on myself as possible and uh you'll note that we are married to lord marcus verus who is the descendant um the scion i believe the word is of mithras who we murdered by diablerie and eight. In fact, we did a lot of murdering and diablerizing people to get more powerful. Uh, if we have a look at books and secrets, I believe we scroll down. We, ooh, hello, blackmail. Look, we've got a lot of blackmail going on right now. That's another thing about the mod. We'll talk about it in a bit. There we go. We feed on our vampires. We are a diablerist. We murdered Lord Mithras, who looks very derpy. We murdered more people, more people, more people, more people, more people. We're now sixth generation. We used to be 12th. Uh, we also created vampires on my crescent ghouls on math. That's a whole nother thing that I'm going to talk about in a minute. But if we have a look at our abilities, you'll notice we've got some potence over here. We've got some fortitude. But because of Diablery, I managed to get some really powerful perks such as advanced presence. So if we have a look, we've got presence advanced without actually having to buy it normally because we Diablerized someone who had it. And there's a chance we picked it up. And we did, along with advanced dominate and advanced all specs and look at our prowess it's up to 64 knights i.e champions i.e vampires in this game are far more important than your normal knights in core ck3 because like you can't just normally kill them and so having very very powerful knights is so much more important levies you can murder them pretty easily like a vampire can go through a lot of levies very very easily especially with like a prowess of 64 so, we are going to find someone who would be... Find someone in your court. 
right, this court here. You notice that we have the ability to summon. And that's because of some of our amazing presence abilities. We can just say, hey, we're just going to summon you. And then you get a scheme. Uh, hunger will increase. We gain blood hunger three famished. And we'll summon them to our presence. So we'll summon you. Uh, we could also do, hey, like a scheme of, ooh, look, maybe you're particularly tasty. We could do a scheme to diabolize you and eat you. Or if we need to get our hunger down, which because right now I believe we are a little bit hungry. Yeah, we are famished right now. You also notice that our masquerade exposure is now threatened. Whoops. We should try and get our hunger down. So let's let's find some mortals. Let's just get some peasants. We can also get scoundrels, merchants, warriors, and clergy. They'll cost us different things. But for now, let's just get some peasants. And then let them show up. There we go. New blood. Lovely. In fact, you've got 17 prowess. That's not bad. <laughs> go to our council. Oh, not our council. Our court. And then... You. Let's hunt you. Notice you can also do entrance and rationalize. Again, things from the presence and dominate tree, respectively. Entrance, because we've got so much presence, allows us to give someone a plus 50. Oh, you like me now. Um, again, it's a scheme. And you could also be like, all right, well, what if I want to rationalize and then make you think you owe me a favor? Uh, which is a powerful dominant ability, which makes them give you a hook. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah I do owe you the favor. Again, scheme you can do. Um, you've actually got pretty powerful intrigue defense. We're going to hunt you. And then drink your blood. Uh, you can also embrace someone and turn them into a vampire. So when I create this character, we started off as low as possible. 12th gen. No one in our family tree. And when we grow more powerful, I decided to add some people. So let's open up our family. And you'll notice that we have one, two, three people we've sired. You've sired someone. Interesting. And so we now have an heir. Someone that we sired. Very nice. You'll notice that we have like a whole load of things going on here. It mentions things like primogeniture, uh, stuff like that. There's a whole load of stuff with feudal contracts that's changed. You are married to a Nosferatu. And that's modeled on the character. Um, if we actually go to modify feudal contract, you'll notice that there's a whole load of stuff about the traditions Blood tithes, they have to give me Vitae, which is their blood. Um, there's a whole load of stuff. I'm going to go into it in detail because there's so much going on with this mod. But you'll know that it goes really in depth. Uh, right, let's actually let these events fire off. And... And here we go, summoning her. I feel my mystical energy touching the mind. She's resisting the summoning. So we can rouse the blood to exert her. Uh, ooh, only 40% chance of success. Or... We will use more stress. And then 50-50 chance. You'll notice that there's some red text in the pop-ups. This is a very nice touch that they've done. In all the pop-ups, there's this red overlay text sometimes. Uh, which basically is like your inner vampiric beast. And it's like, yes, bring them to us. Uh, let's, yes, rouse the blood. Oh, she resisted it. Damn it. Let us hunt them down and eat them. That's very tempting. Very tempting. Uh, foiled. And then we'll hunt you. You've tracked your prey down. You take the first bite and you succumb to the kiss. How much blood will you drink? And then you can choose how much blood to drink. Uh, drinking more does cost piety. I believe that's because of our actual, like, religion. Uh, we're quite human. We don't want to kill people. Humanists. In this one, at least. Uh, but we could take a drink. They'll be weak, but fine. They get a slight health penalty. Uh, we also gain phlegmatic resonance, which is a type of experience which will go towards our perks. Again, like, you can unlock the perk, but you need the experience to be able to get it. So let's just take a drink. They'll be weak, but fine. And then we get some experience. You'll note, however, that um, because of the humanist thing, there's a lot of things that uh, you don't like doing. Humanist is very restrictive. It's all about remembering being human. And to get up to sixth generation in this playthrough, I did, I did hunt down and eat a lot of people and then diabolize a lot of people, all of which are very illegal and cost a lot of piety. So hence my piety now being minus 12,000. That's never coming back. I will say there is a few downsides with the mod. Uh, firstly, it takes a lot of time to do stuff. Like we've gone, what, 50, 60 years in game. 
you get experience so slow. And because you don't have children, there's very little you can actually do with the game. Like, you can totally do all the cool new interactions they've added. But there's a limit to how much you can interact, especially since we start off as a small nation. So, we can't have a load of children, marry them off to get alliances and so on. Really, the only alliance you can get is the alliance you make by marrying yourself to someone else. Not, not, not to just yourself. That would be kind of pointless. Um... Secondly, you do end up waiting around to try and get some abilities and stuff to be able to do something. Uh, for instance, even with the normal stuff, like over here in stewardship, to get golden obligations, which is the entire reason this country actually has money right now. We're run on blackmail, as you might have guessed. Yep. Uh, it took quite a while to actually get to that stage. So it does slow things down a little bit. But... It's still in development. It's such a cool load of abilities. In addition, there are some really nice touches. Like you can do, uh, if we look over here, spawn army. And then we can mass embrace people to make vampires. Just going around making as many vampires as possible. Or we can just get a load of ghouls by feeding them our blood. It allows you to make someone who's like slight, slightly vampire. So they become a little bit tougher. They get some abilities. Um, that's ghouls. And you can do this. It's normally quite illegal. Again, depends on your religion, but allows you to have regiment wars become ghouls, living, giving them your blood. Uh, they are pretty useful. And especially if you need to make people quickly. Now, in canon, this is a thing that the Sabbat did a lot, uh, which is a group who are, or were very evil. Whatever. Anyway, we can totally spawn an army. Again, normally a crime, normally people complain, but secrets, whatever. There is one thing also that's slightly imbalanced. If we go to find mortals and we look for, say, scoundrels. 17 intrigue, 13 intrigue, 20 intrigue, 18 intrigue, 14 intrigue. And this I would consider low. You can find a lot of people with very high stats by doing that. And yeah, what should I do with them? The beast is like, yeah, let's eat them. But you can then just say, okay, come to my court. Now you can do stuff for me. And that is how I actually, in this playthrough, found most of the people in my court. If we actually have a look at our council, uh, I believe our spy master, I embrace personally. Uh, yep, she's caitiff. She had a 22 intrigue and that's why I put her in the council. Um, I think I also embrace you. Yep. And again, another of my heirs because she came along with a 24 stewardship because I asked for merchants. It's maybe a little bit overpowered. And I think I embraced you. Hatif. Yep. 21 learning. So it, it's a little bit powerful as it is to be able to just call people with that high intrigue. But very useful. The game focuses a lot more around intrigue because of the time spent. You can, in fact, have, I believe, an extra intrigue going at all times. So you can have, like, two intrigues, one um, diplomacy-esque sway type ability. So it's really cool. Again, I know I'm just mostly just talking about how awesome this mod is. Um, ultimately, if you like World of Darkness, you'll love this mod. It might still be a bit rough in places for you. You might be like, oh, wait until they've got a few more features or whatever. But you'll still probably like it right now. Even if it's only for a little bit. It's a mod. It's free. Um, secondly, if you don't know about World of Darkness, you might still enjoy the mod. Because it adds a whole load of new stuff and a different way to play the game. Hey, new start date, new people, etc. It's a lot of fun. I'm really tempted to play this on Twitch. Uh, I have a Twitch channel, as you don't know. I tend to stream currently Monday, Tuesday, Friday. I'll put a link somewhere. Um, but also, like... Just maybe on the channel. I'm just very tempted. It's just a lot of fun. And uh, hopefully this video has been somewhat enlightening. Again, I know I didn't go super in detail. And there's a whole load of lore stuff that I didn't want to go in detail about. Because you could go for you could go for days reading the White Wolf Wiki. It's a lot of detail and there's a lot of lore. 30 years of this world existing has meant that uh, there's a lot of stuff to go off. Which is fantastic. I've been Andrew Elysium. Hopefully you've enjoyed uh, I'll put a link to the mod somewhere in the description if you want to go check that out. Uh, also, do like and subscribe and comment and do the bell because YouTube really likes those things and it helps me out. It helps the channel out, especially the commenting thing. I'll be interested to know what you thought of this. Again, this is a quick overview of the mod because, like, it's really good. And also, oh, that was so quick. It's out so fast. Uh, because World of Darkness is the world is now owned by Paradox. Paradox actually said, hey, 
you want to use our games and use our things to make mods of the worlds we own with sure go ahead and that's really cool so kind of enthusiastic on all fronts i'm gonna stop talking now so that i can go and diablerize more people but uh until next time stay shiny be a vampire do crimes diablerize people <laughs>